there, Lorcana lovers. My name's Lizard, and today I'm excited to talk to you about a deck that I've been playing since the beginning of set three. It's personally one of my favorites, but I've waited until now to do a video on it just because it received a lot of hype for a while, and then it died down, and then people now I think are just really underestimating just how powerful this deck could be. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to talk about the Jafar deck. And remember, folks, please consider subscribing to my channel if you like this kind of content. It really helps out. So now, let's get into it. Alrighty, guys, I'm calling this deck Jafar 19. Now, I know you guys have seen a lot of versions of this Jafar deck, right? The combo deck. The deck that wants to get this Jafar striking illusionist in play, and then, of course, sing a whole new world and instantly gain seven lore. Right, that's what this deck wants to do. Now, I've seen some great variations. Uh, there's a guy by the name of Zepha who really took a Jafar deck undefeated in a, quite a large tournament. Uh, and then in the top eight, he did lose. However, his version looked a lot different. If you guys want to see that, I recommend looking him up on YouTube. His name is Zepha. And if I remember, I'll drop a link in the description as well. So the version I'm running really goes all in on Jafar. And I do like this version better. Just because, you know, when someone realizes you're playing a Jafar deck, they're going to do their absolute best to just get rid of that Jafar threat and not let you shift. And so having all of these Jafars to shift onto really helps this deck uh, actually pop that combo off. So let's look at it. We've got Pascal. I love this card. We're running four copies of him. Just a nice one drop to have. And... You're usually wanting to hold off questing with him until you have at least two characters in play. That way he can have his evasive. We've got a two drop Jafar, running three copies of him. We're gonna run four copies of this three drop Jafar. This one's nice because you get to look at the top two cards of your deck and uh, put the one on the top and the other onto the bottom. That's nice for cycling through and knowing which cards you want to have next. So you can do some lines where you'd play this on three and then potentially play the Maleficent on four if you don't have a better choice. Uh, you'll also have times where you can chain things together like with the uh, friends on the other side and the boss is on a roll. So when you're manipulating the top of the deck and just being able to draw into the exact card you want, that's, that's really helpful. It gives you a decent bit of control. So you see four copies of the Maleficent. This card's been around since set one. Still an excellent Amethyst card. We're running two copies of the Benja just to get rid of the items. You guys all know there's quite a few item decks running around and you absolutely need to have something to deal with those items. And then I'm running two copies of this Genie. This is one card I'd consider cutting from the deck. It does help whenever your opponent is stopping your whole new world plays. It's just another card draw mechanic, but being that he's uninkable, it's just, I don't know. I think we could potentially cut it and add some other things, like maybe even a grab your swords. I feel like this deck does struggle sometimes against aggro, definitely against the Emerald Steel. If they happen to get a bunch of Cursed Murr folks down, like it, it, it gets kind of hard to deal with. So I'd consider swapping the genies out for something else. Now the Jafar, I'm running four copies of this. This is a, an, another Jafar card that just really went under the radar. It's a strong card. He gets plus one attack for each card in your hand. And when you're able to pop off the whole new world or just all of the card draw mechanics in this deck, he can usually deal quite a bit of damage and take out locations or just high willpower characters. And he also has five willpower himself. So really a pretty strong card. And then we have four copies of this Jafar the Mecha Snake or whatever he is. And uh, once again, just a, another Jafar body to shift onto. Decently strong card, also lets you draw cards whenever you challenge and banish uh, an opponent's character. I'm running four copies of the Yzma. This is another card I'd consider dropping a couple from the deck. You mostly want to use this card to, to shuffle your own characters back into your deck just to get you more card draw if you have Jafar out. Sometimes it's just not great to allow your opponent to draw cards. So if, unless you really have a threat that you need to deal with, yeah, you can use her to get rid of an opponent's character. Maybe, a, you know, Maleficent's Dragon or Tomatoa. Some of those just threats that need dealt with pretty quickly. Uh, well, the Dragon already did what it needed to do. So more so like the Tomatoas, the Bells, uh, maybe even like the Robin Hoods. She's good for that, but like I said, it's it doesn't feel great to let your opponent draw cards. She works better when she's drawing you cards and putting cards like Pascal 
back into your deck or even Benja and letting you potentially draw into him again later for more item removal. And then of course we have one of my favorite cards. This artwork is just so cool, guys. This is Jafar Striking Illusionist. You've all seen him. You all knew the hype at the beginning of set three. And like I said, it really died down, but I really think people are underestimating this deck still. As a combo deck, it is so much fun to play. This card's evasive. Shift five, and during your turn when this character is exerted, whenever you draw a card, gain one lore. So in a deck like an Amethyst Ink Color that wants to draw all kinds of cards and pair that with a whole new world, you'll win games really fast. You really will. If you can get that combo off, you're gonna destroy your opponent. And it, it just, it happens so quick. Sometimes the games just go by so fast and you're like, all right, let's go. Let's do, let's go again. That was awesome. So then for our removal, we're running two Fire the Cannons and just one Baboom. I would potentially add some more removal in this deck. Maybe cut one of the Genies or two of the Genies even, one of the Yzmas and just do some more spot removal type cards. Maybe add a couple more Babooms. I would hesitate to add any more Uninkables. Um, if you do, maybe a Swords, but uh, I think there's also a chance that you could make some room for the Giant Tinkerbell in this deck. I haven't, but I'll mess around with it some more. For our songs, we have Friends on the other side, and we need four of those. I'm currently running four copies of the bosses on a roll. This card's great for manipulating the top of your deck, and it's also just a really good late game card when you're stuck at, say, 19 lore, and you have no way of getting... Uh, you're going against control decks, and they just keep getting rid of everything you put into play and you're stuck so this is nice it works kind of like a goat uh, except it's one cost less and it lets you manipulate the top of your deck and then you gain lore so that's kind of a surprise win condition every now and again I'd consider going down to three copies of that to make room for some more removal uh, we are running three copies of and then along came Zeus this does five damage to chosen character or location we need, absolutely need, the four copies of the whole new world. You all know what this card does. Everybody knows this card, and everybody expects this card to eventually be banned someday. And then for the items, I'm running three copies of the lamp. This card's excellent in this deck. You can banish it. If you have a character named Jafar in play, you draw two cards. You pretty much are always having a, uh, a Jafar card in play, so this is very helpful, especially if you're just trying to cheat out some extra lore if your Jafar Striking Illusionist is exerted and you don't have access to the whole new world, we have all these other cards that can kind of supplement that card draw for you. And then lastly, I'm running four copies of the Queen's Castle just for some more card draw. This doesn't ever help your Jafar because this is at the start of your turn and he's not ever exerted at the start of your turn. If you wanted to get silly, I suppose you could use one of those Winnie the Pooh I'm Stuck cards uh, and stick your own Jafar and have you know card draw at the start of your turn and him actually be exerted but I don't know that's kind of silly it'd be funny though and uh but yeah this is just a great card for getting some more cards into your hand it gains you two lore it has seven willpower and it's inkable so before we get into the Pixelborn gameplay I will say sometimes it's quite challenging keeping this Jafar alive right only having five willpower he falls to the Along Came Zeus, so going up against any kind of steel deck is sometimes pretty challenging. They also have the Ursula card that's getting rid of song cards in your hand. So Emerald Steel is quite challenging for this deck, and also Amber Steel is rather challenging as well, because they have the bare necessities. They can get rid of your whole new worlds as well, and then they just have all the access to the steel removal cards. So something I'm messing around with right now is making room for a couple of mouse armors. I have no idea how well it's gonna work, but I'll drop a comment in this video later on after some more play testing and let you guys know if I do or do not recommend adding some mouse armors just to buff Jafar a little bit more and make him a little more sticky to the board. But with all that being said, guys, I will leave a link for this dreamborn.ink deck list in the comment section of the video so you guys can check it out whenever you'd like. And without further ado, let's get into some Pixelborn gameplay. Alrighty, first up we got a game against Emerald Amethyst. It's great to see the fire of the cannons in your opening hand, especially against Emerald. Let's get rid of the other songs though, just in case they have that Ursula on their turn two. The lamp's great to have early on. Um, this Yzma card's not so helpful in the early game, so we'll, we'll ink her. 
like to see the, the goat going into the inkwell. That's always a nice sign. We have two copies of the bosses on a roll in our hand, so we should ink that, play the lamp. And we see a second goat in the inkwell. That's nice. They play a Flynn. So now we have our fire of the cannons to deal with that Flynn. Ink the Maleficent, play a Jafar, and deal with the Flynn without any repercussions. And we could banish the lamp now and draw cards. Um, but just in case they're going to play an Ursula this turn, I'd rather not accidentally draw into a good song. So let's just wait. And they do play an Ursula, but not the one I was thinking of. So she's troubling. Uh, it would be nice to maybe run a Smash or two in this deck, just specifically to deal with that Ursula. Because she can get out of hand very quickly. But for the moment, let's manipulate the top of our deck, get some more card draw, and gain one lore. And then from here, we can actually draw the card that we just put on the top of the deck with our lamp. And leave Jafar um, safe for now. That way she doesn't challenge into him. We'd really like to keep a Jafar out to be able to shift. We drew into our um, whole new world, which is awesome. Hopefully, if these Jafars stick on the board, we will be able to pull it off. And as soon as you pull this off one time, your opponent's going to really start to feel the pressure. And all the, you know, almost immediately, you're just in a, in a pretty good position. And uh, if you can pull it off twice, you're probably going to win the game. So they play bosses on a roll. They're going to take a little bit of time deciding how they want to manipulate the top of their deck. And because it's Ursula, she gets to sing it twice. So bear with me, folks. So not that they really needed to manipulate the top of their deck twice, but obviously they, they'll they take the two lore. Yeah, I mean, that's cool too. So we draw into a Pascal. He's not all that necessary later on in the game. He's nice to have early. And then we will do our Jafar shift and sing a whole new world. Now we could have waited another turn, but I, as soon as you can get it off, just just pop it off because they could remove your Jafar she could bounce it back to my hand, and she could also have gotten rid of that whole new world. It would have been nice to be able to utilize the friends on the other side first, and then whole new world, but sometimes getting too greedy like that can really screw you over. So if you have the chance to do the combo, it's usually best to just do it. Okay, and they are going to just go ahead and quest out. It doesn't look like they had a very good song to sing with Ursula that turn, which is great for us. They bring another Flynn down, and they're going to go pretty wide here. Obviously, they don't think I have a Grab Your Swords or a Tinkerbell, which I don't. Once again, that would be a pretty good reason to include that in this deck. If you can find a way to make room for it, it might not be a bad idea. So let's ink the second Pascal, and... At this point, we could load this genie on and set us up for next turn to... Um, quest with him and gain even more lore from the Jafar. We'll gain two lore from the friends and pass our turn over to the opponent. And at this point, it looks like they are just going to quest with everything. Once again, they didn't have a song to sing with their Ursula, which is rather unfortunate because we have another whole new world in our hand and we are set up to basically be lethal next turn. Now they can bounce their goat. It's not going to be enough, though. I throw them the well-played, because next turn, they don't know this, but I can do two Jafars. We'll quest with the one, and then sing Whole New World and wind up with 25 lore. Which is crazy, guys. This is crazy. That's like best-case scenario, having two Jafars in play and gaining seven lore two times in one turn. That's just nuts, but so much fun. There you have it. There's the first game. Let's continue. Next up, we're going to do an Emerald Steel matchup. Now, I'm showing you guys this because, like I said, Emerald Steel is a pretty tough matchup, but you can win, but it kind of really hinges on them not getting the early game cards that they need. So I went ahead and mulliganed all of those cards away. I had too many songs. And uh, having the grab your, or rather the fire the cannons is really nice early against the emerald steel, especially if they start loading the board up with those cursed merfolk. 
So having low cost cards early on against Emerald Steel is usually best. So let's go ahead and continue to load up our side, quest with Pascal so that he can have his evasive. I'm not worried about him shifting that Robin Hood yet. He doesn't have enough ink. So next turn I can deal with it. Being that he inked a big Robin Hood, I'm guessing he had two in his hand. And he's gonna be pretty disappointed next turn when I fire the cannons on his little Robin Hood, denying him his chances of bringing that really strong shift Robin Hood down onto the board. He's thinking pretty hard here. He or she, I always say he, sorry guys. It, you know, it could be either or. We will ink the Benja. There's not a whole lot of items that I'd imagine they'd be running in an Emerald Steel. We will get rid of their Robin Hood. Go ahead and shift our, no. Let's just quest and pass it. We want to save the ink right because right now we have two cards in our hand that are uninkable and at this point like it, it is beneficial to get ink into your inkwell every turn but against a deck like emerald steel yeah you have to worry about them discarding cards from your hand but you also need to kind of worry about running yourself short of ink so if you if they're going to discard cards from your hand, let it be the uninkables so that you can assure yourself that you will still be able to build up to at least five ink. Six is ideal for this deck. They, of course, will take out the Jafar, but that's okay. I'm glad I didn't shift that because now I have a second Jafar at my disposal as well, which is yet another reason to keep a Jafar in your hand. He's not always the best to shift because you want to you wanna give yourself as many opportunities as possible to have a Jafar on board in order to then shift your big Jafar. At this point, I don't want to get rid of my genie yet. I'd rather save him for if I get a big Jafar and just have more card draw. We will go up to the six ink, just in case we draw into this Yzma, and we do. Um, so we might as well get rid of this beast. I don't really want them continuously getting card draw off him. I, granted, I did give them two cards for that, but that's okay. He's a menace to deal with, especially once he gets damage on him and he's got seven um, attack. Uh, it's just a really strong card. So deal with him and quest. Now we know for sure we're gonna be drawing into our big Jafar next turn. Unfortunately, they hit us with the grab your sword, but luckily our two of our characters have enough willpower to survive that. We'll play him and we'll draw our big Jafar. Now, do we save this? Do we ink this? I could have played that. I probably shouldn't have inked that card, but that's okay. If we draw into the big Jafar, we can still, I'm worried that they're gonna potentially have another grab your sword and that would have cleaned up everything. So I really needed enough ink to be able to play a song and load up more characters but at this point 16 nothing like we're we're in a pretty decent spot they find the beast again they ink the sudden chill because we have nothing in our hand anyway they're gonna go ahead and sacrifice two of theirs to get rid of our yzma which they had to because they didn't know if i'd have a song if i'd draw into a song or not and win the game but at this point, I can just play the Yzma. I don't need to use her ability. Don't want to give them more draw, card draw. But we are lethal now, unless they have a way to deal with it, and they don't. Next, we're going to play into a an Amethyst Steel deck. This is not a Jafar deck that we're playing against. Amethyst Steel, guys, it has quite a lot of variants. Uh, just a very strong deck. Both are excellent ink colors. Steel has so much great removal, and Amethyst has so much great card draw. So it's no wonder Amethyst Steel is just such a well-rounded, powerful deck. We don't have to worry about them discarding our song, so I did keep the whole new world, and we're in a good position. We have the Jafars, every Jafar that we're going to need. It would have been nice to have a one-drop Pascal, but that's okay. We will get the Lamp into play. Now they could have a Benja, but we don't have to worry about that just yet. So they, they could also have the Rise of the Titans and have a way to deal with the Lamp. And some people are even running that five drop Beast card to deal with items, but we wouldn't have to worry about him for a little while. Even still, if they banish the Lamp, it's not as huge a deal as if you were, say, playing um, Sapphire with your Fishbone Quills. 
that hurts really bad. Uh, when they banish the lamp, it hurts a little bit, but it's not, it's typically not going to lose you the game. So I could have banished the lamp at that point. However, I'm getting a little greedy. Unfortunately, we drew into another whole new world. That kind of sucks because, you know, you're going to have to discard one of them whenever you use it. They did draw into the Benja, so I, in retrospect, you know, in hindsight, I should have just banished it and drew some more cards. But that's okay. I didn't really want to load up my hand with cards that I wouldn't be able to use because I see that in just one more turn, as long as I get an inkable card, I'll be able to use the whole new world combo. So honestly, it was probably still best that I decided not to use it. You don't want to discard cards that you might wind up needing later on. So that wasn't a bad play. They do take care of one of my Jafars. Luckily, I have the second one in play, the Mecha Snake or whatever that is. And they bring down a Robin Hood. We draw into a Pascal. It is inkable, thankfully. So we can do our first Jafar Whole New World combo and get us up to nine ink. Or sorry, nine lore. Five ink. If Jafar gained you ink as well, holy cow, <laughs> that card would be broken. The ultimate ramp. So they're going to draw some cards as well. Being that our Jafar is evasive, they have nothing that they can challenge into him with at the moment. They could potentially find some other targeted removal. However, it's being that they haven't put anything in their inkwell yet, I don't think they have the Along Came Zeus. Then they do not. So they are going to try to draw a card off the Rabbit, which is another card I considered adding to this deck. The only trouble is he's also uninkable and our four drop section would get just a little bit murky. We have two Jafars that were running in the four drop section, so I ultimately decided to leave the rabbit out. Let's get rid of this Robin Hood just in case he's got the big one that he's gonna shift down next turn because with six willpower, I wouldn't have been able to deal with him with the Long Came Zeus. I could have dealt with him with the Yzma, but it's easier just to get rid of the little one now and avoid that issue later on. So I'm hoping I can draw into some more card draw, um, but I do have my Yzma to at least guarantee me two lore through card draw next turn if I shuffle my one Jafar back into my deck. So I could, you know, quest with the Jafar, quest with the other Jafar, play the Yzma and shuffle the one Jafar back into my deck, gaining me two more lore. So that would be a total of five lore in one turn, which still is great. So there's lots of ways to gain lore with this deck. In fact, I will go ahead and quest with the Striking Illusionist and then play the Maleficent, gain a lore from that. Draw into the lamp, which is more card draw. I can banish the lamp, gain two more lore from that. And then I get to Uh, find something to ink. We can go ahead and ink this Jafar and quest for two more lore. Now, next turn, we are in such a good position. We have enough lore on board to just win with, even if they say they do take out um, the Jafar, the, the non-evasive Jafar. I can still play my Yzma and shuffle the Maleficent back into my hand. I have enough, I have enough options here to still win next turn, unless they have a way to deal with both this Jafar and Maleficent, which I don't think they're going to have what they need. Okay, they find the, and the Along Came Zeus, which that, that sucks. So that would be a good um, instance to have that mouse armor. I'm not sure how well that's going to work. I will test it out, but being able to at least give him the resist plus one to survive those along came Zeus's, that'd be really cool. So I will do some play testing with that. I said earlier in the video, I'd let you guys know how that works out. I'll just drop a comment in like a week or a few days on this video and let you know if the mouse armor is a good idea or if it's just too clunky. So they did a good job cleaning up my side. We fortunately have a lot of cards in our hand. 
and we can draw into another Jafar striking illusionist next turn and I'll just hang on to the um, friends on the other side because I can shift that Jafar next turn and have enough lore to win the game. I can quest with both of these, shift for five, and have three ink left to play the friends on the other side and close the game out that way. So they're going to definitely need to clear my board yet again. They're thinking hard. They probably have at least something that they can remove with. Being that they're playing steel. Okay, they find the baboom. Do they have something to remove the other Jafar? Oh, they <laughs> have the Pinocchio, which will be enough if they throw both the Captain Hook and the Robin Hood into him. And that seems like it's exactly what they're going to do. Or do they have something else up their sleeve? Okay, not a bad idea. So they can get two lore from that and still banish my character. So they did a great job cleaning my board up two turns in a row now, but I still have a decent bit of card draw at my disposal. We will play this Jafar and just go ahead and pass. Let's see if they have even more removal. At this point, sometimes I would check their discard just to see how many Along Came Seuss have they played so far. Do they have any more um, cards that can potentially deal with this Jafar? They can't Pinocchio him and challenge him because he's evasive, so they pretty much have to have that. And then Along Came Zeus. You see there I was checking. That just went fast, but I wanted to see how many they had left. I have three, and then Along Came Zeus is in my hand, which is nuts. But... I'm going to play the lamp, banish it, and that's all I need, folks. There you have it. Jafar winning the game without the whole new world combo, but just utilizing the other card draw mechanics that we have. So this match was a prime example of just how useful all these other card draw mechanics are in this deck. Because when, you know, worst comes to worst and you do not have that whole new world combo, Guys, you have a lot of other options to continue to cheat out that lore with your Jafar, and it is just, it's so much fun. This deck is not the hardest deck to pilot, but you do, you have to think quite a bit about um, just how you sequence things, right? So if you want to quest and then sing or sing or, you know, there's just a, you do have a lot of choices with your sequencing, but that's, you know, that's just how it is with any trading card game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. This deck, like I said, it is so much fun, guys. Who cares if it was overhyped or if, you know, people want to rip on you for playing the Jafar combo, give it a try. I promise you, you will have loads of fun. In fact, if you want to build a physical version of this deck, the Jafar Striking Illusionist has come down quite a bit in price. So now's your chance to buy four copies of that card and go to league and just, you know, really frustrate some people because when the combo pops off, man, it feels so great. I'm telling you guys, you gotta just try it. Let me know in the comment section what you think. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you wanna be notified of future content, I'm doing these videos at least once a week for you guys. So please consider subscribing to the channel. As always guys, be kind and have a wonderful day.